Hello, I'm Rich Bergenstahl, the Executive Director of the International Diabetes Center located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm very pleased to be working with the Diatribe and the Diatribe community to address innovations in how CGM is transforming diabetes care. Welcome back and thank you for watching the first video shedding light on your AGP report when I discuss the importance of standardizing CGM data into a one-page report. The AGP report provides information you need to further understand and manage your diabetes. Now, in this video, I'll discuss how you can use your AGP report to improve your time and range and the importance of working closely with your diabetes care team. But sometimes you get to the office or you say, I was taught to use the A1C. The A1C has been my guide for the last five years or 10 years or 20 years, however long you've had diabetes. That A1C has been a benchmark. Why are we talking about time and range? Well, that's because we really, really, really think time and range is much more personal to you. Your actual glucose values not some blood test that's averaging them out over 90 days. And here's just one example I like to use. These are three uh, individuals that I have followed for more than 30 years. Uh, I know each of them well, and they, each one of these three individuals, here's their AGP report their middle panel, their look at their profile. Guess what their A1C was for patient one, two, and three. All three of them were at 6.7. So there we go. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Pat myself on the back. I, we did a good job working together. And yet look at those profiles. Each one of them got a lab blood test of 6.7%, but remember hypoglycemia under 70, the bottom patient had nine times as much hypoglycemia as the top one with the same A1C. And then remember I talked about glucose variability, how much they swing up and down. There was twice as much variability. 53 was the number versus 26 for the top. Remember I said I'd like it to be under 36. So, and then finally, the time and range that we're talking about, the bottom one had a time and range of only 50 and was 83 for this one. So A1C does not tell you the whole story. We really want to look at that time and range and how much hypoglycemia there is. It really will mean a lot more to you in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. And there, there they are again, displayed in this table form. Six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, but very different hypoglycemia variability in time and range. So we believe that the CGM and all those elements are much more meaningful to you than just an average over 90 days. So that's how you organize the data, why we think it's important. Now, how do you analyze it in just a straightforward, systematic way? And you might say, well, if I look at this report, how do I tell if I have room for improvement? Am I meeting all the objectives that, I, that you should want, that your healthcare team should want? And if not, what should you work on first? So I'm coming back to this top bar again. Do I have room for improvement? Here's that top bar we talked about with the metrics, the 10 metrics and the target ranges. And here's what I advise you. You can study all of these, all that you like, and you can become expert in every one of these 10. And, and they're all interesting, trust me, they're all very interesting. But if you just wanna take 30 seconds and say, do I have a problem? Do I have an issue? 
then here's what I would advise you to do. And by the way, this is what I'm advising the healthcare professionals out there to do too. So you might as well be in on, in on it as well. Go straight to this bar. We call this the time and ranges bar. Just go straight to that bar and just shrink it down in your mind and just look at the green and the red. Look at the time and range and the time below range and come over here and say, okay, I remember what they said. It's right over here on the left. I put it over here again. We want that green to be 70, uh, above 70. We want this red, these two together to be less than four, the bottom one to be less than one. So you just look at this once a week, once a month. You look at your numbers and say, do I have more green and less red? That's what I want. More green, less red. I want that green to be over 70. I want the red to be under four and under one. So that's the 30 second look. Just go straight to that bar and see, do I have room for improvement? If you have room for improvement, and you probably will because we're always working to smooth out that time and range, then next go to that middle panel and look at the actual profile. We call it the ambulatory glucose profile of the AGP report, midnight to midnight, all the values. It looks, it looks kind of funny when you first look at it, but the black line is the median. Half of all the values are below, half are above. The shaded blue line is half of all your values. It shows you how much you vary around that average or median value. And then the, the lighter blue cloud outside is, is 90% of all your values, 5% above, 5% below. And it goes from midnight to midnight. And here's the target range, 70 to 180. You'd love all that, all those values to be within that 70 to 180. This person is not there yet. There's still work to be done. This one has some room for improvement. There's the target range. There's the low. There's the very low. There's the high. There's the very high. So where do we start? We look at these. We always want to prevent hypoglycemia because it's scary. It's dangerous. So let's get rid of that hypoglycemia first. So we circle the areas that we want to work on. You are, this, this individual is having values in that 54 or very low range between midnight and 3 a.m. They're having some values 5%, 10% of the time between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. So let's figure out together what's of your medicines. What of your food choices? What of your exercise is leading to those low blood sugars? And let's help you get rid of those, move that curve up. Then we'll come back, maybe not that first day, maybe the next visit, but maybe we'll do it that day. We'll work on the high ones. How can we get this one, which looks to me like after breakfast, but we'll ask you when you're eating and we'll mark it on here. And it looks like after dinner. It looks like we've got two high points. So is that the food choice? Is it the insulin dose? Is it the oral agent you're taking or injectable medicine? There's lots of things we can do once we have the picture to help you. So that's the second part. Number one, is there room for improvement? Number two, how do I focus on making that improvement in this middle pan panel? Then often people will ask me, well, okay, where would you like this picture to be? What, what am I really aiming for? When I got that A1C, I knew I was aiming for something. It was seven, or I wanted to be seven, five, or whatever you had decided on. Tell me what I'm aiming for. I heard you 70% time and range, less than four and less than one, below range, okay, but what does that picture look like? So here's the little description we came up with at the International Diabetes Center, just to give you a guide of what we want it to look like. We would like it to be flat and narrow and in range. And look at this first 
individual. It was not flat, that black line, that average line, it was not straight across here, it was up and down, up and down. Okay, not flat. It's not narrow, meaning these shaded blue lines are kind of wide around that black line. There's a lot of variation from day to day. And it's not in this target range. It's not here between 70 and 180. So this one needs some work. It's okay, we can work on it. The next time the person comes in, progress, it's flatter, but it's not narrow. There's still a lot of variation. Sometimes it's up to 250 in the morning. Sometimes it's down to 70. The average might be 180, but we got to work on the narrow and it's not in the target range. So next visit. Oh, we're making progress. Look how flat it is now. It's not going up and down, up and down on average. And the variability around that is pretty small. So that's really good progress, but still it's kind of high. It's running right up around 180 uh, all the time. So it's pretty consistent but it's a little consistently too high. So next visit, we're working together. Next visit, here we go. This is pretty good because it's flat. It's pretty narrow. We're always gonna have some variation, but most of the values, most of all these values are in the target range. So, we check it off and say congratulations. Congratulations actually at every step of the way of making progress. It's flat, it's narrow, and it's in range. It's F-N-I-R, flat, narrow, and in range. I hope that's the kind of discussion you're going to have with your healthcare team, with your husband, with your wife, with your, with, with your friends. Um, am I flat, narrow, and in range? And remember, each 5% increase in that time and range, here, this person got to 87%. Now, that's not easy. But going from 50 to 55 is important. 55 to 60 is important. Every 5%, you've actually done yourself a big favor for your clinical long-term risk. So. I'm wrapping up now. So where am I now in terms of using this data to really improve my glucose control? I know how to look at the data maybe a little better now because we've been through the dialogue. How do I actually find this on my systems? And I'm going to just pick the two. I don't have time to do all four, but here's the Dexcom. And if you haven't been to these links, you know, take a snapshot of this, uh, look up the Dexcom.com clarity, uh, clarity.dexcom. You'll get, you'll get to their instructions, their website. You'll find out about the Clarity app. Put that on your phone. And then when you get there, go to the computer, open it up, and choose the AGP report, there's a lot of good reports, a lot of data, go right down here to the bottom, uh, click how many days you want, 14 days to look at, then go right down here where it says AGP, because that's the report I just showed you. Click there and you'll get the report on your mobile app over here, just click the number of days you want to display, 14 I recommend, and then go down to the bottom again and click AGP. Uh, you'll want to go down to the bottom first here and click reports. 14 days, AGP, and you'll get that picture just that I showed you. And you can really evaluate how you're doing. If you're using the Libre um, system, LibreView.com, uh, Freestyle Libre link, put that on your phone, get it set up, and then Look at the computer, select the AGP report. You'll find it just like the picture I just showed you. That's the top panel. You can get the next panel and the next panel. Now go to your mobile app, come right over here, 
and click those little menu, you know, the menu bar where all our apps, click the menu and up will come. Do you want to look at your time and range or time and target all those ranges we just talked about? Do you want to look at your daily pattern profile? Look at that average AGP profile. Do you want to look at every day's graph? So there's that AGP, all the parts you can analyze and see how you're doing. So in closing, for my discussion today, what can you do to improve your time and range? And here's what I'd recommend at a high level for you to start with. Just be sure you know what your, what your targets are. You'd like that to know where does your doctor, where do you want your fasting glucose to be? Do you want it to be between 70 and 130 like we recommend at the International Diabetes Center? Uh, before a meal, 70 to 130. After a meal, don't go up over 180 as a target. Yes, you're always going to have days where you go higher, but know what you're aiming for. That makes it a lot easier. We would like there to be more green on a daily basis every day or every week or every 14 days. Are you spending about 70% of the time most of the day between 70 and 180? And keep that red. Don't go after the green so hard that you're causing more red or low blood sugars. Keep all the values below 70, under 4, and under 54, below 1%. So, so if you know what you're aiming for, that's an important start. Then look at your readings. Look often. You're, you're wearing the device. Look at your phone. Look at your values. It doesn't do any good if you're not looking at them. Yes, you can go back every week and that's nice but look at least 10 times a day every time you're looking at your phone which for most of us is more than 10 times a day look at your glucose and just know what foods are affecting it what exercise is affecting it um, and then also go back and look at this weekly uh, every every few weeks uh, look at your report of your time and range and your profile Try to increase that time and range slowly but steadily without more hypo, 5% time and range uh, by the next visit, by the next visit. Which foods cause the spikes? How much does activity lower your glucose? How much does the timing of your medicine and which medicines are most effective for you? All of these make a difference. So does stress, so does sleep. All of those are critical. So it's really about observing, just being a good observer. And with, with continuous glucose monitoring and the AGP report, we've got a lot of things to observe. When should you notify your healthcare team because you're seeing things that you really think might need attention? If you're having hypoglycemia, um, if you're finding that more than 4% of your values are under 70, more than 1% are under 54, or you're just concerned about low blood sugars, call your healthcare team. Be sure you have means to raise your blood sugars besides snacks uh, in your car and at your bedside and, and glucagon available if you, if you take insulin. Call your team if you need help with low blood sugars. They can help you. Is your profile FNIR? Is it flat, narrow, and in range? It's not going to be there right away, but if it's wildly different from flat, narrow, and in range, then talk to your healthcare team because they really can help you narrow it down and, and, and improve it. So I hope this was helpful, and I want to just thank you for taking a few minutes to listen to me talk about something that I really think is transforming diabetes care. We're gonna have more of these discussions about type one and type two diabetes. We're so lucky to have an amazing team, Dr. Anders Carlson, Dr. Amy Kriego, Dr. Tom Martins, Dana Gershenhoff. We'll all be sharing with you their experiences in type one, in type two diabetes, in primary care, making lifestyle ch choices, and I hope we're going to be able to figure out a way to take your questions and to interact with you. 
So thanks again for being part of the Diatribe community. It's an incredible resource. I'm happy to be working with them and happy to have a few minutes to talk to you today. Uh, take care, be safe.